All right, what's on, going on guys? Uh, for day two of the Trans Am rebuild, I guess we're gonna start by pulling this hood off of this uh, Formula 350 parts car. I didn't mean, or I didn't want to pull this hood off until that black hood sold, uh, just for storage sake. But I forgot to bring my hood hinges with me today. This one has a set of hinges on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off, and that's where we're gonna start. It's safe to say I'm getting better at taking these off by myself. I think I'm, I think I'm gonna swap both hood hinges, uh, just for consistency's sake. I know for a fact that this hood lined up on that car with these hinges. Um, so I think even with that other hood, it should be fine. But that should eliminate the variable of me bending both of them, I guess. Like I was saying yesterday, just the way the the hood is in the lining, the way it's hitting the fender, like right here, and uh, hitting the headlight, and just the, the overall shape of the taper makes me think that hinge is bent. Um, so I'm just gonna throw at least a hinge on this side. I think I'm gonna do both. I might as well just do both. I'm gonna have to swap the struts, but. Uh, that'll take a couple minutes, so let's get to I'm it. hoping that the kind of awkward motions I did with the hood didn't bend this one in any kind of way, but I wasn't pushing that hard, so I don't think it'll be a problem. So let's check it out now, I guess. See if it's any better. Um, doesn't, uh, it's a little better. Uh, I might try to push the adjustment this way. It's a little close on this side, but it's not hitting here anymore. The center line is much better and you know, the gap is there's a little bit of a taper but it's much more equal than it was previously so let's try to move it to the right a little so, bit and see what happens i think this is as good as this hood's gonna get i'm not sure what the deal is like I, like i've been saying i'm not super worried about this side i think this gap is probably related to when the fender got hit and pulled the whole thing out that way um and the bumper is definitely lower than it should be it's uh definitely pretty obvious especially if the hood shut all the way um that leaves about a quarter inch gap uh but my the concerning area for me is this side so as you can see that gap is pretty tight and the adjustments maxed out to the towards the engine on this side and then towards the uh edge of the fender on that side so theoretically there should be more adjustment on that side anyway because of how tweaked the fender is and I can't get it any wider than this. And this is like, it looks wide enough, but when you shut the hood and it latches, it rubs on this corner up against the fender. Um, like that. So that never actually goes all the way down and it's sitting here rubbing away at that. Um, here's the gap on the hood I'm talking about. So I'm thinking when I have the new bumper on, uh, I should be able to try to figure this out a little better, but um, it's kind of annoying. I've spent quite a bit of time messing with the hinges and the hood position on the hinge and everything, trying to get it just to latch safely enough. Like this is the, the first configuration I've had it in where the hood doesn't want to pop back up. Um, and I spent so much time on it, I realistically i am not going to make it to the DMV to get this thing inspected, uh, which kind of sucks that was the whole point of the last uh, couple days of work uh, I should have got out of here a little earlier but uh, there's other things for us to do today so um, this definitely isn't the end of the video quite yet it's so tight on that corner that so the, the hood's already popped it doesn't pop up but it's so tight over here just get your finger under there and like that's how tight it's squeezing over here you can even see the start to see the scoring on the side of the hood and I'm sure on the fender that's equally as evident. Yeah, you can see a little bit of rubbing over there, but nothing too major. So, I, haven't, I guess we'll see. I had this thing running in probably, uh, I think I moved it back here in May from the front of the driveway. It used to be up where that IROC is up there. Um, I moved it back here in May 
drove it around a little bit just to kind of get the floats moving but after that I parked it and I haven't touched it until yesterday so I'm gonna throw a battery in it and we're gonna see if the thing starts right up I don't see why it wouldn't I'm gonna check the oil make sure there's no water in it or anything like that um, but yeah, I mean, it's a stock 305. I doubt anything's going to happen to it while it's All right, so the relocated battery's in. I figured no one wants to watch me change a battery. Uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. So I heard some positive noises when I got the power hooked up. Yeah, I heard the, what I think was the headlight motors getting power again. Uh, they kind of like cycle a little bit. And yeah, I guess we'll see if the fuel pump primes. And if it does, then the door, and I don't go. hear the door buzzer or anything. So that's not a, you know, a good starting point, but stick the key in oh that's good fuel pump and well that's not that's not good guess we'll have to see why it's doing that the oil pressure gauge keeps going back from 30 to 60 and i'm not totally sure why um I guess we'll look into this right, a little so bit. Pedals to the floor. Let's see if we can get this thing started. Maybe we'll clear the, the excess fuel out a little bit. Oh, tried. The the gases that's in this is just bad. I think I uh, I filled it up in July of 2016, I guess. Because once I bought my Corvette, I kind of stopped driving this car, and you know it's only moved once. So uh, nine, uh, I guess a year and a half of um, gas sitting in the tank. I guess the the gas could be bad. That's why it's not going. I mean, it's trying to fire here and there, but it's definitely doesn't sound like it wants to start right so away. So I can't get the car to fire still. Uh, I'm still kind of leaning towards uh, gas going bad. Um, it has been a while. It's definitely not fresh. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure, you know, we can hear the fuel pump running, but I want to make sure it's getting to the fuel rail. So I'm going to turn the key on so the pump primes, and that should send uh, fuel up into the rail. I'm going to pop the Schrader valve out over here. Well, not out. We're going to take the cover off. I don't have my fuel pressure gauge with me because I didn't really expect to do this. And I'm just going to poke it. As you can see, there's already fuel on the, say we have, there's definitely fuel getting to the rail. Uh, but I'm not sure with how much pressure that it could it just, could just be bleeding down because the pump's not running. It just it's giving it a little prime pulse. But there is fuel getting to the rail. And it smells like gas. So we know there's no breaks in the fuel lines or anything. Uh, vacuum leaks don't seem likely. So I might go grab some starter fluid and see if we can get this to run on that. And maybe it'll take over from there. And just the injectors on these, at least on the uh, 7730 powered ones, is the injectors are always hot. And then uh, the ECM will ground the injector driver for a certain number of milliseconds to fire the injector injector through pulse width modulation. Um, basically, what it says is injectors are always hot. You can check them for power, but they won't have ground if it's a VATS issue, or if your ICM goes bad, they won't have ground either. So I have a cheap, like two dollar test light from AutoZone. If you never use the test light, you hook it to ground. When you touch power, a clean powered area, it lights up. So since we have ground now, the injectors, it's going to be hard to get into these wires with one hand, but injectors have power, as you can see by the light, if I take it out, the light goes out. So the injectors have power. Uh, this, I guess this should be the ground wire. It's hot on both sides. Um, that's strange. It's supposed to be like that. I'm drawing a blank right now. What we're gonna have to do is check that out. My plan was to leave the, the phone in the engine bay with the probe stuck into the power into the, the ground wire so I could watch it from I could watch it later to see if we have ground on the injectors. I don't see any reason why the ignition control module would have gone bad, but the ICM does have to be functioning for the ECM to fire the injectors. The test light is into the pink and black stripe wire, which I think is the one that normally is grounded just because it has the black stripe. Um, so I'm going to set this up somewhere. I'm going to go crank the car and we'll see if we get any uh, good results.
Well, that's interesting. I didn't expect it to start, but it did. So, sweet. It's a little loud, but it still runs like a beast. Uh, you know, 140 horsepower beast. Lots of unburnt fuel in there from all that cranking, but it sounds good still. It's been quite a long time since it ran. Hopefully the trains are still good. You know, a year and a half sitting for an automatic isn't too bad, but I mean, it, it's definitely not great for it. But I think on that note, you know, the car starting uh, as I'm trying to diagnose why it won't start. Uh, it's always a great feeling but I'm gonna end the video there, I think. I had a couple people call me looking for parts uh, in the last few minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and get all that ready for them. Um, like I said, I, I'm not making it to the DMV today for inspection, so this is how it's gonna sit for a little while. I'm hoping to get out, it's supposed to rain the next couple days, so maybe I'll do some content on my other Firebird that sits in my garage all the time. Um, yeah, we'll see, but uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.